Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, Golovkin delivered against Martin Murray. More beer for us. He won the fight. More importantly, he got the KO, which helped the rate of return. Right now, Murray had a few problems going into this fight. The first is he's too upright. He couldn't protect his body against a hellacious body puncher. Right? He didn't have enough power. He could land the counters. He just couldn't land them with the kind of authority needed to dissuade Janady Golovkin from, from hunting him down. Right? He has a good defense, but it's not an active defense. In other words, he puts his hands up like this. His defense is not really part of his offense. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Right? Also, his distance was predictable. Right? He's on the outskirts of the pocket. Right? He's far enough away from Golovkin where Golovkin likes to operate right but he's not too far from Golovkin or too close to Golovkin to make Golovkin uncomfortable right also he couldn't lead Golovkin who likes to be on his front foot around the ring right he didn't have that ability now let me say this for those who want to deconstruct the film right because Golovkin's future is a big part of boxing right now. He's in the conversation as one of the very best pound for pound in the sport. People are wondering who could beat him, right? If I had one round in this fight to watch, it would be the second round, right? I thought that second round was very revealing. I thought Golovkin gets hit with some meaningful punches in that second round. I gave the second round to Martin Murray. Let's talk about Golovkin. Right? You know, Golovkin has a puncher's mindset. The world is different for guys with fastballs. Right? It just simply is. As Ralph Kiner once said, stretching that, this analogy even further, home run hitters drive Cadillacs. Right? Understand... Gennady Golovkin is in the ring. He's not worried about volume. He's not. He's not even worried about trying to outbox you. He's not. You don't see him pumping a jab, trying to impress the judges. Nothing like that. He knows he has concussive power in both hands. He's trying to walk you down and land power shots. The first round, he's observing you. It's not even all of the first round. Let's say it's the first two minutes of the first round. He's seeing how you move around the ring. He's just looking at you. Then he methodically starts to cut off the ring. He wants to see what you leave open. He'll even throw some fake shots. He'll faint. Right? He'll see what you cover up. In Martin Murray's case, Martin Murray covered up his head. Right, he's standing straight up. He covers up his head. Janady Golovkin starts winging big-time shots to the body. Understand, he's all in when he throws his power punches. He goes flat-footed. He's not flat-footed before that. He makes sure to move a bit before then in hunting you down. He's an athlete. Right? You'll notice Golovkin is an athlete. But when he starts throwing power punches, he goes completely flat-footed. Right? He'll throw power punches in succession. He can do it switching hands. In other words, he'll throw a punch to the body with his left hand. Then he'll come back with a power shot with his right hand. In other words... He's coming in fully committed. He jumps in the water. Right? When he's throwing power punches, he's prepared to throw two, 
three power punches in a row. He's not a pot shotter. Right? This is not Floyd Mayweather. He's not in there just trying to throw a hard right hand and then but get out of the pocket. Now, this is a guy who, when he starts throwing, he's throwing. If you don't move while he's throwing, you could get stopped. Right? You understand the high intensity of the fight early. Right? When Golovkin jumps in, he jumps in all the way. However, there's a lot of caution there. In other words, when I say he jumps in, Lufkin doesn't like to be too close to you. Right? He doesn't want to be close enough to you where you can hold him. He doesn't want to be clinched. He doesn't want to be tied up. So he's figured out how to dole out big punishment while being just a little off at the side. Just far enough away where if he hits you and you reach to grab him, right, you try to do an Ali move and you try to grab him like Ali grabbed Joe Fraser in their rematch, right, Golovkin takes a step back. Right? That'll have him take a step back. He doesn't want to be clinched. He'll move away to avoid being clinched. He has the athleticism to do it. Now, during the telecast, they threw out a big name. Boxing royalty. It was a very revealing moment. And I watched the HBO feed. Let me say I enjoyed that feed quite a bit. I thought Roy Jones Jr. and Max Kellerman put on a great show. And they pointed out, with Jim Lampley, that Abel Sanchez confided to them, Sanchez is the trainer for Janady Golovkin, that the fighter that Sanchez is modeling Golovkin off of is Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Right, now let me say this. Right? And I was alive during the Chavez era. I remember it vividly. Right? I can tell you I went to Mexico. The fight was in San Antonio, but I went to Mexico. Right? To actually watch the Chavez Sr. versus Pernell Whitaker fight in the early 1990s. Right? I actually saw on TV as it happened Chavez against Meldrick Taylor. Right? If you're of a certain age, you remember both fights. Right? Let me say this in the kindest way possible. Golovkin isn't as good as Chavez was in his prime. Chavez seems to be misunderstood by a lot of people. In my opinion, Chavez had Roy Jones Jr., prime Mike Tyson level reflexes in some areas. There's a big gap between young Chavez and the Chavez that lost to Costa Zoo. Right now I've posted in my favorites folder here a fight you must see. It's the early rounds of the fight. It's Chavez, prime Chavez against Ramirez, right? It's prime Chavez against a dangerous fighter in a title unification match. Now what I want you to do is to watch the first three rounds of that video, ignore everything else going on in the fight, literally ignore everything else going on in the fight, and just look at Chavez's head movement. That's all I ask. Right? I don't want to sound crazy here, have people laughing, saying, Roy Jones, Mike Tyson, ha ha ha. Look at Chavez's head movement. It's on par with prime Mike Tyson's head movement. Just look at the head movement. What I want you to do, too, is they actually post 
some copy box numbers at the end of a round. Look at the copy box numbers. Understand Ramirez is one of the few fighters who was more front foot heavy than Chavez. He actually has Chavez up on the ropes at one point. What I want people to understand is Prime Chavez had a level of head movement that Gennady Golovkin does not approach. Okay? Understand, a lot of Chavez's game is Golovkin's game. Right? You can see the similarities. Right? It's clear that Abel Sanchez and Golovkin love the fact that Chavez didn't want to get too close to you. I know Chavez was dominant inside, but early in fights, he didn't want to get too close to you. Right? Chavez threw big punches, just like Golovkin. Huge puncher in both hands. Just like Golovkin, Chavez could throw shots to the body. Just like Golovkin, Chavez was accurate with the power shots. Right? Chavez could come up top. Chavez could throw punches from odd angles. Chavez could take you out with body shots from distance. Chavez, like Golovkin, had a great chin. Just Google Roger Mayweather's comments. Mayweather was a victim of Chavez. Just Google Roger Mayweather's comments on Chavez's chin. But let's be clear here. And I understand Chavez was a guy who was known to not train that hard. But life's unfair. Just understand, Chavez had head movement and was harder to hit. And it's important. Right? Was harder to hit on the way in than Gennady Golovkin is right now. Right? In other words, Golovkin's a bit stiff up top. He hides his head. He does what vets do. Right? He, he plays angles. That's very different than Prime Chavez. Prime Chavez, like Roy Jones, was the kind of guy who's just standing there. You know, at times his hands are down. You threw a punch, he could literally just go like this. Just literally move out the way. Now that costs him, and it costs Roy Jones, later in their careers. Because understand, it costs Mike Tyson. Sooner or later, those reflexes dim. Right? If you're in your later 30s, you're better off being like Vladimir Klitschko, having a construct around your head, not relying on reflexes, right? So when guys throw, you're blocking shots, right? But make no mistake, Prime Chavez, in addition to being a great hunter, right, who was hard to clinch, right, Prime Chavez also had upper body athleticism, that Gennady Golovkin doesn't have. So to the old timers out there who remember Julio Cesar Chavez, just understand, in my opinion, and I consider Golovkin to be an excellent fighter, but in my opinion, Golovkin doesn't have all the tools that Chavez had. What I want you to do is as you look at the Ramirez film, Focusing on just Chavez's head movement, just his head movement. You'll understand that that's a big part of that fight. Ramirez can't hit Chavez. Chavez knows it. Right? Chavez knows it. That opens the door to a whole lot of other things. Let me also say this too. When we talk about Prime Chavez, you're talking about a guy in his 20s. Just like when you're talking about Prime Ali, you're talking about a guy in his 20s, right? Not Mr. Ropa Dope, but, you know, the guy who fought Zora Folly, right? The guy who fought Ernie Terrell, the guy who fought Floyd Patterson. That's Prime Ali, right? 60s Ali. With Chavez, Prime Chavez really, in my opinion, is pre-Pernell Whitaker. Right? Now, let me say this. The similarities between Triple G and Chavez in other areas, right? How they pursue opponents. The idea that they're hunting you down, they're cutting off the rig, 
They're patient. They're not too worried about volume. They're trying to take you out. Right, Chavez? Just look at the KO percentage. That's all I can say. Right? Golovkin, I believe Golovkin's on a KO streak that's well into the double digits right now. Right? These guys, hunters, they come, they cut off the ring. They're not even worried about the judges' scorecards. They dominate on the scorecards because they hit so hard, men are weakened in front of them. Men hit the canvas. You want to win rounds? Drop your opponent. Right? Let me say this, though. Because Triple G is so much like Chavez, except for the head movement and things like that. Right? And I would say Chavez had faster hand speed. Let me also say this, too. And it was controversial. Chavez was calmer in the ring. Very hard to find a guy more calm. You'll notice in the Ramirez fight. Ramirez has him up on the ropes and Chavez looks at him. Right? No panic in his face. Right? Chavez is the kind of guy who could be losing to Meldrick Taylor and still have, you know, the presence of mind late in the last round to KO Meldrick Taylor. Right? I believe Chavez is a bit more patient and less rushed than Golovkin. I thought Golovkin panicked, and I, that's the word I'll use, panicked, against Kasim Uma. But let me say this. The blueprint, in my opinion, on how to beat both men, Chavez and Triple G, is in that Pernell Whitaker tape. I've also posted the link to that fight in my favorites as well. Let's talk about what worked. And let me also say this about Pernell Whitaker. Right? You know, Whitaker's defense is much better than Ali's defense. Right? Let's remember, even Prime Ali is getting dropped by Sonny Banks. Is getting dropped by Henry Cooper. Right? Got hit. Now, Pernell Whitaker has an active defense, not a passive defense. A passive defense is the rope of dope, right? It's Ali with his hands up and Foreman's in front of him, right? Um, you know, it's Martin Murray with his hands up. In, in tribute to Ali, he wins a lot of the rope of dope rounds. Ali actually mixed in rope of doping with some shots and stuff. But when he has his hands up like this, there's no offense coming back. Now what what you have to do against a Chavez, what you have to do against a Triple G is you've got to hide your body. you got to take away at least one of your kidneys, don't you? Right? These are guys coming in, they can throw hellacious hooks to your body with both hands. They're looking for whatever is open. Right? You cannot be facing them square. Right? You can't be facing them like this. You have to be like this. Right? And you can't have all of your body exposed. Right? Because the guy's throwing hooks. The guy is trying to hit you to the body. So you have to band. You understand. If you're sideways and you have a band and you can move right you can hide your body let's coin a phrase here in baseball they have a strike zone let's use the phrase here in boxing against both of these guys you need to shorten your strike zone right you need to bend you need to fight low you need to move you're fighting a guy who wants to hunt you who wants to cut off the ring, who wants you in front of him. So you need to turn it. So while Pernell Whitaker is being defensive, while he, and let's pretend I'm a southpaw, while he's bending, right? And while he's bobbing a little bit, while he's hiding the kidney that's back here, while he's giving you less to hit because he's bending and to hit him in the ribs you have to find his ribs 
right? And while he has a hand here. So when you throw him, you can't even hit him to this side of the body because he has this hand in the way. He's taken away his body. While he's being defensive, he's leading you around the ring with the defense. In other words, front foot heavy guys have to come find him. Right? They're front foot. They're not back foot. So you know the guy's going to be stalking you. Right? Keep in mind, too, you have the added wrinkle with Chavez and Golovkin where they don't want to be so close to you where you can hold them. That's, of course, until they've hit you with a few shots. If you're dazed and confused in front of them, then trust me, Chavez Sr. will come right here and finish you off. Right? But before you're dazed and confused, Chavez Sr. would rather be a little bit away from you. Ditto Golovkin. So here you have a guy who's a cautious stalker, and you're defensive. And you know he's coming at you. And you're using that against him by keeping him spinning, keeping him moving. Look at how Pernell Whitaker has Chavez Sr. in the middle of the ring. Right? Notice how Pernell is hardly ever up on the ropes. You want to see another example of this? <laughs> Let's go way back. My dad's era. Ezra Charles, the great Ezra Charles, against Rocky Marciano. Right? Goes a distance with Rocky Marciano. Doesn't allow Marciano to get him on the ropes. Of course, the second fight, he splits Marciano's nose. It's probably the closest Marciano has come to losing a title fight. The ref tells Rocky, I'm going to stop the fight unless you end it here. And Rocky ends it in that round. But let's get back to this fight. The point is this. If you have an active defense like a Pernell Whitaker, right, and if you can on your back foot actually have offense, hit guys on the way in, right? In other words, a Chavez or a Golovkin comes in. They're hunting you. They throw punches. You're ducking under punches. You're moving away, right? If at that moment you can counter the guy on the way in, you'll be surprised how devastating that can be. Just again, classic fight. Just look at the end of the fourth Juan Manuel Marquez Manny Pacquiao fight. Understand a front foot guy coming in, right? Who's a puncher, who doesn't have. And this is key, who doesn't have Chavez Sr.'s head movement. Because understand, a big part of Chavez Sr.'s game, a big part of Mike Tyson's game, was the fact that as the guy came inside and you tried to counter them, prime Chavez, prime Tyson would be able to just do one of these. Right? Dodge your punch and then guess what? You're the one getting countered. Right? Golovkin doesn't have that. You see it in the second round of the Murray fight. Roy Jones on the telecast tells you repeatedly, it's a shame that Martin Murray doesn't have more punching power because he has opportunities. Right? Understand, you cannot put Golovkin on the same level with Chavez Sr., if he doesn't have Chavez Sr.'s head movement. Right? You'll notice in the Whitaker fight, and this is 31-year-old Chavez Sr., that Chavez Sr. still has the head movement in that fight. Right? Whitaker throws punches and Chavez Sr.'s dodge again. Right? So, let me say this too. Let's throw the whole paradigm on its head. We here have been talking about Fighters who could give Golovkin a hard time. And we always name guys who are bigger than him. Right? Guys who are bigger than him. You know what? One of the big 
parts of Chavez Sr.'s game was the fact that he's 5'7". Right? Understand, it's hard to get underneath Chavez Sr. You notice when he's fighting Oscar De La Hoya, Oscar De La Hoya is much taller than him. Right? Understand, Kasim Uma gets under Janady Golovkin. Golovkin had problems. Right? Golovkin had problems. Understand what Whitaker does. What I believe someone has to do is change distance. In other words, not be constantly where Martin Murray is. Where a puncher can then say, okay, there he is. What punch am I going to throw? No, be too far away. Right? Have that active defense I talked about. Where you're moving away and the other guy's following you around like a puppy. And then be too close to him. Right? You need to mix it. Kasim Uma gets inside on Janady Golovkin. And Golovkin had problems because Uma gets underneath him. Aren't you a bit disturbed that all of these Golovkin fights, there's a distance between Golovkin and the opponent? You never even get to really figure out if Golovkin can fight inside when the opponent is fully conscious. Right? Golovkin just goes hunting. He cuts off the ring. Right? We've seen him hit on the way in with counters in numerous fights. Right? As I've said, Daniel Gill hits him with a great shot right before Golovkin closes the show with the very next punch. Right? My point is, look at how defenseless he is when he's hit. Now, the people who would give Golovkin a hard time aren't the bigger guys. I believe, although some bigger guys, I believe beat him. I take Andre Ward over him. I take James DeGale over him. Right? But the smaller guys would give him a hard time. Right? Let me say this. We have a fight coming up. Manny Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather. Right? I'll just put it to you this way. Manny Pacquiao doesn't have a great back foot game. He doesn't. Right? But he can move around the ring and he has big power. And he could get underneath. Underneath Janady Golovkin. Right? A mobile guy with power. I would say Manny Pacquiao. I know it's controversial. I'd say Manny Pacquiao has more power than Martin Murray. Right? A mobile guy with power who can move. Right? With a small strike zone. It's not that Manny Pacquiao is defensively gifted. He's not. But Manny Pacquiao has a small strike zone because he can bend and he himself is shorter. Manny Pacquiao would give Janady Golovkin all kinds of problems. Understand, Golovkin has volunteered to go to 154 to fight Floyd Mayweather. Understand, Pacquiao at one point held the title at 154. I know, it was a catchweight fight against Antonio Margarito. Right? Margarito was a big man. Right? Just understand, some of what worked against Margarito would work against Janady Golovkin who I don't think is blessed with great hand speed, right? Could you imagine Manny Pacquiao getting inside Janady Golovkin's envelope and riddling him with shots and then dodging to the side? Let's talk Floyd Mayweather. Now, the question on Floyd, and it's being whispered right now, is folks noticed in that rematch against uh, Marcus Maidana that Marcus Maidana landed a few punches. Right? In fact, the Madonna fights had people whispering. The first fight caused the second fight to happen. Right? And people are saying, whoa, Floyd's a little bit older. Have the reflexes dimmed a little bit here. Right? My point to you, though, is Floyd has an active defense. Right? Understand, Floyd would be able to do things against Janady Golovkin. Right? Golovkin... You know, a couple of things. First, 
Golovkin coming forward. Floyd could move away. Lord knows it's hard to hit Floyd in the body. Right? Floyd could move away, give a small strike zone, and certainly hit Golovkin on the way in with left hooks. Right? Understand, again, Golovkin, in my opinion, would do better against bigger men than smaller men. Because smaller men can get underneath him. What I want people to do is to look how low Purnell gets against Chavez. Right? So, while I think a Golovkin beats Canelo and James Kirkland and folks like that, right? You know what? I'm not sure what happens if Golovkin fights a Pacquiao or a Mayweather. Let's just say the winner of Pacquiao Mayweather is going to have opportunity. Hell, the loser of Pacquiao Mayweather is going to have opportunities. Right? But just to understand, Golovkin, you know, like everyone else, like all of us, is mortal. Right? I took him in this fight. If you go back years, you'll see I've been talking about Golovkin for years. Right? I once made a video where I said my prediction is that Golovkin and Tyson Fury would have really bright futures and would take over boxing. Right? Neither guy has lost since that video. Neither guy has lost yet. Right? I'm a Golovkin fan. But, like all of us, there are holes in his game. He doesn't have the head movement of Chavez. He can't get as low as Chavez. Right? Against a shorter fighter with hand speed. And an ability to move a little bit better than Martin Murray, who's going to hide his body, right? Uh, who's going to raise the temperature in the room and who's going to be hard to corner. Golovkin would have problems, right? So let's pay attention to Golovkin. If the guys he's fighting are upright and have bodies that can be hit, Right? Don't move that well and are actually going to try to engage him. Golovkin is going to be devastating. Right? Especially if the opponent doesn't have an active defense. But if the opponent has an active defense and can use Golovkin's front foot against him, if the opponent can make Golovkin miss and while Golovkin is flat footed, counter him and hit him. If the opponent has the timing to hit Golovkin on the way in, right, when Golovkin's on the way in, things could get interesting. I tip my hat to Golovkin. He's certainly a major player in the sport of boxing right now. He's a must-see boxer. But none of us are unbeatable. Not even this fighter. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. If you feel I've misrepresented anyone I've mentioned in this video, Martin Murray, Golovkin, Pernell Whitaker, and by the way, as I said, the Pernell Whitaker Chavez film is the blueprint on how to beat Golovkin. Right? Chavez Sr., Pacquiao, Mayweather. Then I hope you leave those comments for us here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.